Hey, what up guys and welcome back to the video. It's doing a bit of a wagon update today in this video. So, left the video, last video, um, we finished that off as in where I found the puncture in the tire. Got that repaired, chucked the wheels back on it, and then went to take for a drive and it decided it didn't like me again. So, we managed to fit, fix the idle issues by doing all the stuff we did in the last video. And then when I took it for a spin, despite idling smoothly, it was um, dying under load. So when you try to like ask for some more gas or, or pull off a bit faster, it would just sort of stall or cut and die out. Um, and then it also, uh, shortly after that, threw a gearbox uh, cog of death code, basically from startup thereafter. Um, did a bit of, of digging off camera that night. Um, trying to figure out what could throw a fault code. I had no fault codes in the engine or anything, but eventually after lots of reading and um, then figuring out how to test a an air mass meter with a multimeter itself, I've never done that before, but, but read a nice article that showed me how to do that and actually tested the air mass meter on it and found that while it was reading within the right range, while it was sitting at idle, as you revved and opened the throttle body and more air came through, the reading from the air mass meter was staying completely still. So effectively it was reading idle volumes of air even when there was far more air going into the engine. Also I want to do a bit of an update on what's happening with the wagon. So I know we were plan was to rip this down to Auckland, use it in the detailing company and give it a mass makeover. Um, so we decided with the detailing company we're sort of doing something slightly different with the company now where we're going more towards selling rather than, than detailing. Um, so what that means is the wagon is going to be my personal car. Because um, if you would have seen in the Range Rover update video that I hopefully also filming today but hopefully upload just before this one is that I sold my coupe um, which was my daily. So what I'll do is this will be my daily um, and then we can use the funds from the coupe to get the Range Rover back on the road which would be cool. In the meantime this can hopefully be my reliable um, daily but I'll also tinker with it and tidy it up, tidy it up as we go. Um, so I actually started chucking the MS, the new SMS meter in this morning, just hadn't filmed an intro yet so we'll jump to that footage now and then I'll see you guys after after that. I didn't film uh, taking this out because I figured we did that on the last video and we've already seen that. Um, but I'm just trying to take off the rubber boot. There we go. And now we can take out this old EMS meter. I chucked the, the airbox and everything back in. New air mass meter is sitting. Oh, focus, so you can see the money that I spent that no one's gonna care about, because they can't see. I suppose it makes a drive, so that's good. Um, it's just down in there, so that's all in. I um, just started it up uh, off camera just before to see if it, see if it worked. I had um, dad and mate Jamie here, so I didn't feel like filming, because I get embarrassed filming with people still. Um, and. Yes, yeah, so I started that up and it ran smooth and I still got the wheel of death, the cog on the on the dash and I was like, oh no, this sucks. I was um, very sad, but then remembered that the gearbox won't clear fault codes. Um, I can't clear it on the scanner and so the, did the old school way of disconnected the battery, left it disconnected for a few minutes and dug around in the boot. It starts up just like it did before at idle. Um, nice and smooth. And I was getting, just by the park symbol here, I better not do it now, I'll, I'll cry inside if it does it now. Um, a gearbox cog with an exclamation mark fault code about sort of now after running it. Um, it would just, just keep coming up and also using the stalling um, under load. So you can, it sounds nice and healthy now. Got no cog there after disconnecting the battery. Fingers crossed that means we are good to go. I've just been doing some other little things around it so I'll just show you, show you that what I've been doing. But shortly we'll go, we'll chuck a jerry cannon to fill up fill up that suspiciously low fuel and then we'll take it for a quick spin down the road to test how it runs and also to really do my first decent drive in it and get a feel for it. 
But yeah, other things going on with it when I was I was down here and I was disconnecting the battery to clear that gearbox code, hopefully, which it did. I dropped my 10 mil, which is the most ironic and classic meme-worthy thing, and lost it in the boot here, and then decided to dig up under here and pull all this apart because I didn't actually realise this thing's got a got this big space saver tray. So not really a fan of space savers. Um, so I had this in there, and then this this big tray where it was sitting but realized you can just pull that guy out and then in here we've got a nice normal tire thing so now what I'm just trying to do is figure out from from what I've got lying around if I have a full-size E46 spare wheel that I can chuck in there and then we'll just throw out that that gray tray I won't throw it out but I put it somewhere I don't I don't really want it maybe might go back in over a tire. Maybe it goes in the middle of the tire, hopefully. Either way, put a nice spear in there, put the tray back in, um, and then a bit more space in the trunk and a decent decent tire. I have this old this old one that's been used as a footstep. It's a 16, but I just need to check if the overall diameter is the right size for a spear. Oh, you guys, um, you wouldn't have seen the wheels, so you might have, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen, but let's just, I'll just show you now. So I need to put that cover back on. Um, back on the standard style 66 motorsport wheels so now it is all back the back at the spec it would have come with sweet so after a quick uh using an online tire height calculator i have worked out that the rim down there despite being a 205 65 i forgot the number anyway it's an r16 but the overall tire height dam is actually pretty close to it's like smacking sort of the middle of the overall tire height of the front and rears of these and it's a tire that I'm confident will actually fit in the gap so that's going to be the replacement spare for now ideally I get a nice um, style 66 spare but it's better than the space saver you can probably see there this bottom edge on this is like Campbell worn out to the days so it's not the best spare but I mean I don't have to go more than hopefully 50 k's on a spare to get these tires repaired definitely the wrong way around there Wait, what? Can I trick it and go that way? I can. That's not really what it's meant to do. Let's see how well this wing nut will, will hold it down. Yep. Ooh. It's not going anywhere. Sweet. That is a filthy wheel that I definitely should have cleaned first, but never mind, never mind. It's not forever. Look at this. Look at the state of this wheel I just put in here. I mean, look at the state of the rest of it, but it doesn't matter until it runs right. It can be filthy and ugly. Now, does this guy fit back in here? It has more storage space. Okay, okay, I will make some attempt to clean. There we go. That was the attempt. Okay. Well, no. One full sized um, spare tire with shoddy grip, but it's pretty good. Actually, I wasn't going to film or talk about this now. Okay, you might have some bad wind there. Um, but I have the D46 wagon drive shafts, full manual. And this box of E46 manual parts that I haven't opened and well I don't really know to be honest if I want to manual swap this car I'm just trying to work out what I use these for if I sell them but I just wanted to have a look at what's in here in terms of what I actually have We have a clutch pedal, we have a shifter boot, Ugh, I'm not going to keep that, that's ugly, um, a gearbox cross member, manual gearbox cross member, a clutch slave, master cylinder they are probably more like, um, drive shaft, donut, brake and clutch pedals for manual, and shifter linkages. 
because it's a, a 318, um, you just need like a little jet rag box, so they're actually pretty cheap. So I'd probably be like, apart from the time, energy, and pain in the butt, and all the things I forget, with that stuff there, probably for like a grand, maybe 1200, 1500 bucks, we could get everything else we need to manual swap it, which would be cool. Maybe, maybe not, not sure. I'm kind of mixed at the moment. Let me know, should we do it? Should we go all out? Should we make this a cool with manual daily? Actually, screw that. Follow, click, like, subscribe, share it with everyone you know, and <laughs> if we get enough people like subscribe and stuff, and there's lots of following on this, I will find a way to financially detriment myself and make this thing manual. But right now, I think I'm just gonna use it to drive and see if I can afford to keep it to one day do. Let's start this thing up. Is it gonna bring up a code again? Or are we gonna be free? Oh, it's not gonna even start. You mongrel of a flat battery. Uh, <laughs> okay, anyway, thought that might happen. I've started and stopped it a couple times and it hasn't been anywhere. So, I'll go get the Range Rover and jump start it, I guess. What I was gonna say before this went all flat battery on me is I was gonna chuck some gas in it, a little jerry can, and then take it for a spin down the road to put some actual gas in it, and we can see if it works. I have the Ranger over. Let's see if we can jump start this bat flattery. Is now it start. Woo. So I took it for a spin, um, just went for like a 45 minute drive and it runs sweet. It's actually really nice to drive. I like it. It still kicks and splutters a bit like it really revs. So anything below like 500 revs, it, it stutters and kicks a little bit coming back up from. Um, but as soon as you get to like six, 700 revs and it's smooth as butter. So it is um, smooth as butter. I can't believe I said that. I don't like that. Um, it's, but yeah, once you get above like 600 revs, really smooth, really nice. So um, yeah, chucked, chucked like a three quarters of a tank of gas, three quarters of a tank of gas in it. And yeah, did the little 45 run, it was all fine. It's actually got like more power than I expected for the wagon and the through net, which is cool. So I really like driving it. It's comfy, real cruisy. Um, suspension is quite nice and soft and then what I did was just gave it a, a, not the full detail, but just a, um, just like a normal wash, just gave it a hand wash to try and get some, looking somewhat presentable, because I'm going to be driving it now every day, um, but we'll still do the full, full detail soon, just wanted to make it look a little bit better, um, but yeah, you can see it here, I took some, some photos in the sunlight, but you can probably see there, it's a bit better already, but yeah, check it out, looking a lot better. pretty sweet but anyway thanks for watching guys just wanted to do a quick update because I hadn't done much um, but yes a bit of a bit all over the show video with the wagon and the, obviously the video before this that you would have seen which is the update on the Range Rover so take this down I might order some more parts for this I actually quite like it so it might be the daily until we get the Range Rover on the road um, but yeah next video in this we'll we'll give this thing a full detail I think will be the plan because if you look here now that it's clean, you can see the watermarks on the glass and like the, the paint has <laughs> got so many swirl marks. There's also quite like a few like these sort of scratches all around and that sort of thing. Um, so I think we just better make it look a whole chunk nicer with a proper detail. So really looking forward to that now that it's clean. But yeah, I'll close out here. I might do a little update at the end if I make it to Auckland. So just gonna have some dinner and then I've got about a three and a half hour trip in it. So fingers crossed I know what I did and I fixed it right. Otherwise it won't be a fun trip. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys and like subscribe. Also, let me know what your thoughts on Do I pursue with this? Do I make it manual? Do I just enjoy it how it is and and move on? But yeah, keep keep posted most of the stuff from here will be Maybe a detailing of this in Range Rover stuff once those parts arrive So fingers crossed we can get something here soon and can all be go go full steam ahead